coincidence that when our founding fathers framed our Declaration of Independence, when they wrote the Constitution, they were very biblically inclined. And so I believe that it's, it's, it's safe for me to start our service off this morning to take these few comments. John 8 36 declares, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Three and seventeen says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now I'm not going to stop there. I want us to go to Brother Carl's favorite book, the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. It kind of brings a sobering moment of understanding to what a life given to Christ is for. It has been remarkable the amount of difference that's happened in just my 35 years of living for God as seen the difference in what Christians say Christianity is. Galatians 5.13 declares, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another. your brother. Yes. It's about your sister. Yes. Jesus declared it's about your neighbor. Right. But sadly, we live in probably one of the most selfish oh, come on. times in history. Yes. 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 We live in a time where some people declare that the wrongs of the past should be paid for by the people of the present. Come on. Yeah. That's true. I'm thankful we got a Savior that paid for my sins oh, in the past that yes. I was up yes. 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 I want to spend a few moments this morning, and I, I really don't have a, a title per se. I do want us to recognize that today is more about God yeah. yes. than anything else. That's right. Amen. Because without Him, none of this would have been possible in the right. Just lay our Bibles down and take a moment. Let's thank the God that oh, blessed us. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. We praise you and exalt your name. I ask for your help today. Somewhat of a message, Lord, to your people, God, today, that we would truly understand the gift that's been handed to us by your love, your great grace, your mercy, and your forgiveness. God, you are our hope. While we're thankful for America, we celebrate its independence today. We know that without you is our hope. If nothing else would really matter, we give you all the glory and all the praise. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. As I said earlier, today we celebrate our nation's 254th yes. birthday. Yes. It is a nation that's based on the ideas of liberty, <coughs> responsibility, and godliness. It's sad that it seems that our line of demarcation in America now sides towards 
the worst degree than our greatest greatness. The founding fathers embraced a revolutionary idea that all men should be free to become whatever God intended them to be. The celebration of Independence Day is really a celebration of my freedom to become. Though I like ice cream and picnics and barbecues and fireworks, today really isn't about all that. It's about a precious gift called freedom. Freedom from tyranny. Freedom to speak your mind. Freedom to worship. Six freedom was just an idea, an unrealized dream. But our founding fathers believed that that dream was valuable. Yes. Valuable enough that they were willing to risk everything to see it come to pass. They risked their fortunes, their families, their reputations, and their honor. They risked their very lives, and many paid for our freedom with their blood and the blood of their children. Today we honor the countless men and women who have given the ultimate sacrifice so that we can taste the fruit of freedom that springs from the tree of liberty. <laughs> it's a tree that which Thomas Jefferson wrote in 1787. He said that the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Him having actually witnessed the revolution firsthand understood the cost of freedom. The price is always paid in blood. And today we worship in security, mm -hmm. safety, and comfort. We do so because of 
thousands of young men and women have given their lives so that we could experience the joys and responsibilities of freedom. Amen. That blood that's shed on those battlefields that really are too numerous to mention have had the privilege of walking the hillsides of Normandy where D-Day was experienced. I've got to see the manicured lawns and the manicured trenches and the dirts. There are other places like Lexington, Concord, Yorktown. Reminds us of places like John 8 34, Jesus told the disciples that every man who commits sin is a slave to sin. Mm -hmm. Today we may live in a free nation. We may not live under tyranny of a dictator, but we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yes. And everyone who sinned, Jesus said, is a slave Amen. to yes. sin. Yes. Thankfully, Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Yes. God robed himself in flesh, oh, redeemed yes. you with his own blood. Acts 20, 28. He came to set you free from the tyranny of sin. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Someone down the street may harm you. You can be hurt in this life. Things can happen to you. But only Jesus could handle the tyranny of sin. That, that's an enemy we could not argue and fight against. But Jesus handled the tyranny and the onslaught of sin that is coming after us. Peter reminds us in his first letter. He says that we are, were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold. He says, for much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. Can I just tell you, silver and gold ain't all that. Amen. It can't help you with the tyranny of sin. You ain't going to buy yourself out of this mess. <laughs> Our freedom wasn't bought with money. We were redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus. The day we celebrate the fact that Jesus gave his life Calvary, so that you and I can truly be free from sin, not free to sin. I'm going to say it again, free from sin, not to sin. When you come up and you repent and you walk out and do the same thing, well, the Bible actually declares and says you're crucifying again the Lord of glory. You don't read your Bible, you need a pastor back. 
the freedom however comes responsibility if you are a free person you are responsible for yourself no one can make you work and we're learning that real quick around this country if you don't work that you choose to do something with your life. That choice is really the crux of what freedom is all about. Yeah. Jesus Christ died so that the whole world could be free from sin. However, by virtue of his death, you have a choice about what you will do with your life. As strange as it may sound, you can choose to remain a slave to sin. some of the people around here and you see them every time you come here. They want to remain free from sin. <laughs> and they realize that that's a daily decision. You'll see them. You'll see them at home reading their Bibles. You'll see them in prayer. You'll see them doing what we call Christian things. That in and of itself doesn't make you good or free from sin. But what it is, is it's a journey, it's a choice, it's a decision that Jesus bought me with a price. And I have a responsibility to that. For me to say, I'll come up here, the first thing you would do is if you saw me doing something or acting in a way or participating in something, like, that's not Christian. I'd be the first person you'd walk away from. Because you recognize that that is wrong, but wait a minute. Am I called to a any higher difference than you? So if you leave here or continue to do those things and, 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 and treat others that way and treat your spouse or treat your boyfriend or treat your girlfriend or, or do that with your finances or you're a liar or a thief or a I can go down the list of them all. You continue, then you're choosing to be a slave to sin. Yeah. Amen. Oh, I don't want to be a slave to sin. I want to be free yes. from yes. sin. Yes. You have the freedom to decide today. If you choose to be set free, the only way to do so is through the blood of Christ. Yeah. It begins repentance. You have to repent. Yeah. Acts 17 and 30. And that the times of this ignorance, God weeped at. Listen, can I tell you something? God will be like, okay. And I, yeah, I'll use my vernacular for me. When I was growing up, you know, being the only boy in a house full of girls, you can't help but make mistakes. It, it's a lose lose situation. <laughs> So my dad, whenever he pulled me aside when I get home after I got looked at and just stayed at by my sisters, chastised by my mother, my dad would, you know, deal with me in front of them. And then he pulled me aside and said, you know, big dummy? <laughs> you know, you, and he'd just give me the man-to-man -man talk. So my dad would like, you big dummy? Y'all may not think that's appropriate, but that's what he called me. You big dummy? But he didn't mean it to me. He was saying the way Yeah. <laughs> 
tried to get a brother because they were like, you know, you don't want kids. Let's uh -huh. get him a dog. So they got me a dog. You know what they named my dog? Dolly. Oh. Are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? You give a grown boy a dog and then you name it Dolly? Oh. And so now my brother was like, hey, you're Dolly. I know. So Should have gone without it. 
I didn't need that sugar. I didn't need. But I gave in to temptation. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> the sin in my flesh is affecting the seat of my head. <laughs> safe distance from the house and the farm and began to teach him. However, Jacob was having a really hard time mastering the slingshot and practicing and practicing, but he just couldn't get it figured out. So his grandfather let him keep the slingshot to practice with. And every day, Jacob would go off into the woods all by himself and try to perfect his aim. And one day, while Jacob was on his way back to the farmhouse, he saw one of his grandfather's and decided to try his aim with the slingshot one more time. Jacob took aim and shot the duck, and would you believe it? He finally hit his target. And with a very not so soft, the duck died, fell over dead. Jacob was instantly frightened. He knew he had been wrong. Oh my Lord, what is grand? Smoothing over the dirt on the grave, he looked up to see his sister Leah looking at him. <laughs> Jacob immediately placed himself at the mercy of his sister Leah, <laughs> begging her not to say anything to her grandfather. With a malicious look in her eyes, Leah simply said, You can count on me. And sure enough, when they got back to the grandfather's house, Leah didn't say a word. But every now and then, Jacob that she knew what he had done. Yeah. That evening after dinner, Granddad asked Tia to help Grandma with the dishes. And Tia said, oh, Granddad, Jacob is just so much better at washing the dishes. And there's something about dishwashing that he loves. So he's going to take my place in the kitchen washing dishes tonight with Grandma. As Jacob looked up in utter surprise and about to resist, she silently mouthed the word. <laughs> as bad as he hated to, Jacob walked into the kitchen and washed dishes that night. The next day, Granddad, out of the ordinary, said, Jacob, let's get George today and go fishing and let Tia and Grandma give the house a good deep spring cleaning. But before Jacob could say anything, Tia spoke up, ah, Jacob hates fishing, but he loves housework. Isn't that right, Jacob? several days. Tia blackmailed Jacob at every unpleasant chore or thing that right. came around on the farm to do. Not only <laughs> every joyful or fun opportunity, Tia was able to steal it from Jacob because of what she had on him. Yes. The worst of it was is Tia had a wagon. She had a little red wagon. She 
want to be toted around in her wagon like a princess. <laughs> Every time Jacob would get done with chores, Tia's chores too, oh, wow. she'd be waiting with a little wet wagon and saying, you know, mm -hmm. I want you to pull me around today in my wagon. <laughs> if you don't pull me around, wasn't able to do anything he enjoyed. Believe it or not, he had become a slave. And as simple as this is, that's how sin is. That's what sin does to you. Yeah. It moves you. Yeah, it it makes you do things you never thought you would. Yeah. Yeah. It'll take you further than you ever wanted to do. Yeah. It'll keep you longer than you wanted to stay. It'll cost you more than you ever wanted to pay. Yeah. It'll hold you Thankfully, that's not the end of the story. One day, Jacob got fed up. He decided that no matter what granddad did to him for killing the duck, it couldn't be as bad as pulling Tia around in her little princess wagon anymore. Mm. And on that day, when Tia cornered him and tried to coerce him, he told her, I've had enough. found his grandfather, much to his surprise, his granddad just smiled at him and said, I knew you killed the duck. I was watching you through the window. <laughs> and I also saw Tia standing there watching you. I forgave you what happened because I love you. I just want to know how long you let yourself be your sister's slave. Tradition tells us 
so many of the citizens of Philadelphia to hear the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence by Colonel John Nixon. The Liberty Bell was made in England, and after being shipped to Philadelphia, it cracked the very first time it was used. The bell was recast, adding some copper for strength, but many complained it just no longer had a pleasant sound. There's a parallel here to the big thing. But it was right. Again, it was recast with more copper, but the resulting sound was the ring was much better. However, despite this girl, its place in history, it was almost lost forever. In 1828, the city fathers had decided to give the bell to a bell maker by the name of John Wilbank in exchange for a replacement. Wilbank agreed to knock $400 off the bill in exchange for the thousand pound relic, but when Wilbank went to collect the bell, he decided it wasn't worth the trouble. The city sued him because they really didn't want it either. Its only value was the four hundred dollars Wilbank had offered in exchange. Finally, Wilbank relented, bought the bell, and then turned around and donated it back to the city. Mm. Talk about nobody wanting it. Mm. He didn't, Wilbank didn't think the bell was worth the trouble of hauling it away, and frankly, he was right. No metal was so standard, it was so damaged from structural weakness that it was rung only rarely. It's only been rung a couple of times in the past 150 years or so because the fear of rain would result in being totally destroyed. There was a time when no one wanted the Liberty Bell. It's the rejected relic. It was cracked, useless, and good for nothing. Yet today, today, in order to go into the building where the, the bell is housed, you literally See in a single moment, in the twinkling of an eye, all culture will cease. All race will be done away with. All social classes will vanish. There'll be no rich, popular, poor, or unknown. Humanity instantly will be divided into
Jesus does. I love that. Borrow freedom to give a flow into your life. After you repent, you're baptized in Jesus' name. This washes away the guilt and sin from you. And God will fill you with the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That's his promise to you. Yes. As we all stand this morning, Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, yes. every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Yes. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Listen, listen, listen. For this promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Mm -hmm. It's a decision. Yeah. It's a choice. Sadly, most of our decisions This and I, I haven't nailed it down. I don't know who we were discussing with the lack of Moses. How easy for him that he has messed up as I should have been. His mom put him in a little boat, put him out of an alligator infested water. Someplace, somehow, standing on the line between the palace and his people, he had to make the decision. There was no keyboard. There was no one patting him on the back. There was no one there to trick him into doing anything. He finally made the decision on his own that Jesus is my Lord. like the moment the Titanic was destined and doomed to sink, there are going to be two classes of people. Yes. The saved and the unsaved. Yes. Your, your financial status, your color, your background, your history, your sin, your goodness won't matter. 